Hi, my name is Mike Nash, I'm the author of Aggressive Health and the creator of the Anti-Aging Health Matrix. And welcome back to video three in this four part free training series. Now in this video, we're gonna go dive deep into tier number two of the Anti-Aging Health Matrix. But before we do, let's recap. Okay, remember back in video one, we took a journey to investigate the top 10 killers in today's society. Well, why did we do this? Okay, because if we're gonna to march towards our 100th birthday with certainty, it's imperative that we avoid the top 10 killers, right? Now, I asked you if you've got a strategy to avoid each of them. And if you have, great. But if you haven't, don't worry, because I've got your back and we're gonna be, be taking care of that. Now, a question you may be asking is this, am I showing you here you know, how to treat disease? And the answer is no, absolutely not. In fact, I've got little, if any, interest in disease, really, other than using it as a motivator to search for principles that create exceptional health. You see, with health, okay, comes the absence of disease. And with health comes an opportunity to maximize your lifespan. And if you make the right decisions, enjoy, you know, enjoy life during the process. Anyway, back to the recap. You also know by now what the anti-aging health matrix is. You know, it's this three-tiered blueprint that will give you everything you need to become an anti-aging master. Now, in the last video, we went into incredible detail about you know, what I call the big seven principles. Okay, the major players that I believe will get you into the 100 club. That is, reach your 100th birthday you know, with a smile on your face. Now, from the outset, it may appear that they are very simple to master, but the real mastery comes in how you can weave, you know, weave all of these principles together and make, sure, you know, make them your day-to-day -day reality, but also make it easy. See, the thing is, it's no good if you spend all your time doing these things and you disengage from life. The idea is to fully engage in life you know, jump in with both, both, feet, both feet, so to speak. But, you know, making sure that when you do, you're doing so from a place of awareness, you know, of how, basically, of how your day-to-day -day reality is gonna affect every aspect of your future. Now, you know, in some cases, I may, may have only just touched on some of, the, uh, some of the ways which you can use these principles. You know, in some cases, I'm not even giving you any action steps at all. But right now, I'm giving you the overview so you can see how powerful this all-encompassing approach really is. And inside the course, I'm going to show you exactly how I apply these principles day by day. Anyway, back to the recap. So, we said that the fastest way to kill someone, right, was to cut off their oxygen supply. Remember that? Then we said the next fastest way to kill someone was to cut off, you know, their water supply leading to dehydration. Then we said cut off someone's food supply, yeah, leading to starvation. Then we discussed the importance of movement, okay, and how preventing someone from being able to move can cause their body to rapidly deteriorate. In fact, just look at what happens to the muscles of a limb when they're surrounded by a plaster cast. Okay, you get rapid deterioration. And most people live a life, okay, where they're, you know, they're effectively surrounded in a plaster cast because they're disconnected from their, you know, from the, mo the, from the movement that they, that they created in their youth when they was a baby and when they were, you know, in their, in their early years. Then we discuss circadian biology and we opened up your awareness to, you know, to the amount of sleep problems in today's society and how if we don't realign ourselves with natural cycles, we'll subject ourselves to increased stress, which, as you know, can lead to any one of the top 10 killers, including suicide. So cycles of sunlight and darkness are really only the beginning, but you know, I'm sure you're getting the idea. Then we discussed what happens when astronauts are subject to long periods of time away from the Earth's magnetic field. And we touched on how you know, PEMFs are used to prevent rapid deterioration and how you can use these technologies yeah, and other shielding technologies to prevent your body from being stressed by the bombardment of stress-causing frequencies associated to things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, you know, mobile phones, mobile phone towers, and then you've got you know, computers that surround everyone, laptops, tablets, etc. Now, these particular technologies aren't going anywhere. And if we're going to coexist with them, we need shielding technology. You know, that is basically shielding technology that's going to help harmonize our subtle energies. And the beauty about, you know, many of these shielding technologies is that regarding, you know, regardless of your kind of level of research into the perils of, of wireless technology, etc., these health technologies have a powerful harmonizing effect on the nervous system and can help with things like oxygenation, hydration, nutrient uptake, and detoxification all at the cellular level. And then finally, you know, point number seven is we opened up this massive broad category that I call connection. 
connection to your mind, connection to your emotions, connection to your community, your loved one, your therapist, your pets, your environment, etc. And yes, we could do a whole course about this, and there already exist loads of courses out there to help you, you know, such as you know, neuro-linguistic programming, which I studied about 15 years ago, hypnosis, which is often taught alongside NLP, to so things like tapping, physical therapy, you know, meditation, and a whole host of healing modalities. But the bottom line is that with, with positive emotions comes good health. Okay? With a healthy brain comes good decisions and you know, good awareness. With good decisions and awareness usually comes good communication and good relationships. So, you know, some people prefer to spend more time alone than, than others, but having strong social connections, whether that's a small social, you know, like a small social group or a large social group, has been shown to have a profound effect, you know, on long-term health. So in the last video, we said that the principle number three, remember in tier number one, is the primary gateway into tier number two, where we begin to look at nutrition. And it's here where I believe most people are confused. Why? Because of the endless diet books and diet approaches that exist out there, you know, that basically prey on people who have watched as their health and energy and vitality has spiralled out of control. So let's look at some popular diets, you know, you've got the raw food diet, you've got the alkalizing diet, you've got the vegan diet, you've got the macrobiotic diet, you've got the food combining diet, you've got the paleo diet, you've got the bulletproof diet, South Beach diet, Atkins diet, the zone diet, you've got the body ecology diet, the list goes on. And there are great benefits, okay, and ideas to be pulled from all of these. But ultimately, if you have a fascination for diets, you ought to be looking at how each of these can help you create your ultimate diet. The way I see it, each person, including you and I, needs to take responsibility and create the diet that works best for us, okay, as long as it's built on sound, you know, nutritional principles. You see, the only diet that I follow, right, is the Mike Nash diet, okay? That's the diet that I've found allows me to achieve everything that I want, okay, such as focus, yeah, to allow me to, you know, to make the necessary progress in, you know, in my business. Energy, yeah, to train, to play golf, to play with my kids, to salsa, to spend time with my, you know, quality time with my girlfriend, you know, goals such as enthusiasm, to love what I do and share the best of what I have with you, you know, the drive to help me make things better and easier, you know, desire to keep learning and seeking out new and exciting challenges, and then you've got motivation, you know, to, to overcome obstacles and, and, and challenges. So that's what I want from my diet and my nutrition and my, you know, my lifestyle factors really to support. Now you might have different motivations, but I'm assuming if you're watching so far, you know, you're kind of like me in the way that you want to have the following, yeah? You want to avoid the top 10 killers, a major focus of, of this video series. You want to march towards your 100th birthday, okay, with certainty and in great shape. And you want to make sure, you know, that along the way you have loads of energy. You know, and in the process, have a bloody good time doing what you love. You see, people, who, people spend their whole life looking for the meaning of life, right? But you know what? It seems to me that those people who do what they love appear to be the happiest. And I can't really see anything that's better than that. So anyway, let's get back to tier number two, okay? Rather than tell you about each principle individually, I'm going to teach you something now that nobody is teaching in this fashion. And, and it kind of baffles me why not. See, to me, it's the most obvious, logical, nutritional framework based on the latest scientific findings combined with the usual run-of-the-mill advice that you've probably been hearing for years. But with this unique perspective, okay, you're going to be dumbfounded why this information hasn't been presented to you like this before. So you ready? And by the way, right, it is ridiculously simple. I'm not, I'm not joking here. So you've heard of carbohydrates, protein and fat, right? You know that even if you manipulate the percentages of these macronutrients, okay, which, which appears to be how most diet books make themselves stand out from the rest, you, you, you get that, you still need some kind of carbohydrate, protein and fat. Okay? Then it comes down to selection, yeah? Okay, the healthiest forms versus the least, least healthy forms. So for example, you know, healthy fats and healthy oils versus unhealthy fats and oils, right? And then you've got healthy protein versus unhealthy protein and, and what actually differentiates the two. Then you've got healthy carbohydrates versus unhealthy carbohydrates, okay? But what if you, you know, what if you take a healthy fat, yeah, and you cook it until your whole house is full of smoke, yeah? What if you take a healthy, you know, healthy protein and you slap it on a barbecue until it's a black, you know, charcoal-like substance? What if you take a healthy carbohydrate and fry it in a non-stick wok that is outgassing substances from that non-stick material that are going to end up in your body? Well, think of it like this, you see, immature thinking says, we just need carbohydrate, protein, and fat, okay? 
Mature thinking says we need non-toxic, nutritious forms of carbohydrate, protein and fat. Right? Advanced thinking says we need non-toxic, right, nutritious forms of carbohydrate, protein and fat and we prepare them in a way that preserves nutrients and doesn't add unnecessary toxic elements. Now the anti-aging health matrix thinking says we need non-toxic, nutritious forms of carbohydrate, protein and fat. We prepare them in a way that preserves nutrients and doesn't add unnecessary toxic, you know, toxic elements. And we adjust the carbohydrate, protein and fat percentages depending on one, our unique biochemistry, two, our unique goals, three, our activity levels, four, our age, and all the other factors that ultimately determine how we feel and, have, you know, and the effect it has on our health. Now that may seem pretty confusing, but listen, once you've done it a few times and you've found a method that works for you, you know, you're more, like, more than likely to return to it. And we cover all these methods inside the course. You know? But wait, yeah? we've missed something here, haven't we? Yeah, we talked about carbohydrate and protein and fat, but what else have we missed? And this is what nobody else is really teaching you, okay? Not in this logical framework anyway. See, from now on, I want you to make the biggest shift in your thinking regarding dietary advice that you've ever made. Okay, and it's the simplest and easiest thing to remember. Now, we all know carbohydrates are sugars, right? Yeah, we all know that proteins are made from amino acids. We all know that there are many forms of fat, right, depending on the chemical structure of the fat. Well, here is your new way of thinking based on the teaching of the anti-aging health matrix. You ready for it? This is how you're going to think from now on when you're building a nutritional plan, i.e. when you're you know, building a nutritional plan of the anti-aging health matrix. Obviously, you start with the tier one principles, yeah, from the previous video first. Then, when it comes to the food aspect, you're thinking of the following. Number one, carbohydrates, right? Which are sugars, yeah? And, and the key is and, the eight essential sugars. Now, do you know what they are? Have you even heard of them? Did you know that the Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded as far back as 1990 to a researcher who basically uncovered their role you know, in the human body? Did you know that your body produces them? Okay, but as you age, production can be compromised. How? Again, here we are back at toxicity. What happens is your body becomes a filter for man-made chemicals. They stockpile and they don't get eliminate, eliminated unless you've got a specific you know, strategy to do so. And remember when we talked about activated forms of oxygen in video number two? Yeah, remember when we talked about the impact of water on the body, if it's got low surface tension, if it's oxygenated, and if it's toxin-free and how that can help? Remember when we talked about PEMF and its ability to support detoxification at a cellular level? You see, the list goes on. All of this supports the body and can help prevent the body losing its ability to create the eight essential sugars. But hang on a minute, okay, what are they and what do they do? Well, first of all, have you heard of them? Okay, you've probably heard of glucose, right? But have you heard of galactose, mannose, fucose? And what about xylose? Many people have heard of xylose, you know, today, or because of, you know, because it's a, it's a popular sweetener. But then you've got N-acetylneuraminic acid, and then you've got N-acetylgalactosamine, and then you've got N-acetylglucosamine, okay? And it's worth mentioning beta-glucans as well because, you know, of their powerful role in health as well. And they often get put in the, uh, you know, the essential sugars category. So here's the question, have you heard of them and are you consuming them consciously? Well, we'll talk about them in length inside the course, but in a nutshell, they form part of your cellular structure and are instrumental in ensuring good communication links throughout the entire body. You see, as we age, produ production of them inside the liver can decline. So ensuring we consume them regularly saves our body the time and energy and resources needed for production. Now, if all this sounds a little bit too confusing, fear not, okay? It'll all make sense once you understand more about them. But do remember this. As communication breaks down throughout the body, then it becomes harder for the immune system to recognize, identify, target, and eliminate known invaders, which may account for the reasons why, you know, we're a lot more resilient to health challenges in our youth rather than in our toxic old age. In fact, once you've been through the course, the concept of essential sugars, you know, and the role they play in your health will, you know, basically roll off the tip of your tongue. Okay, they're gonna, they're gonna be, it's gonna be that obvious to you. In fact, once you've been through the course, not, not only will you understand more about them and more about the Nobel Prize winning research and its link to the immune system, but you'll also be in a place, you know, that when you think and hear someone arguing about carb percentages in the diet, you'll be able to take a step back, think of the anti-aging health matrix and think carbs and the eight essential sugars. 
clean, non-toxic, nutritious carbohydrates, and the eight essential sugars. You see how simple that is? Carbs and the eight essential sugars. Yeah? Say it with me now. Carbs and the eight essential sugars. Next, you've got proteins and the essential amino acids. Now, there is massive health benefits to be had from the essential amino acids and their strategic uses, usage. In fact, one of, the eight, one of the essential amino acids actually has a high ability to absorb oxygen. Okay? It traps a lot of oxygen inside itself for later release. And here's a clue. Right, of what it was. It was once a banned amino acid. That's right, banned. Ironically, just before the massive rise of antidepressant medications. Now, is there a link? Well, listen, that's for you to decide. But as I've said, strategic usage of amino acids can massively support your mission to march towards your 100th birthday with certainty. But more about this later. Then you've got fats and the essential fatty acids. Okay, now to link back to tier number one, if you don't get the right fats into your diet, then oxygen cannot work its way into the cell. Now, some of you may have heard of the, of the physicist Dr. Joanna Budwig. She talks a lot about consuming the right kinds of fats and how electron-rich fatty acids play a key role in respiratory enzymes and are, you know, and are the basis of cellular oxidation. So in a nutshell, consume the right kind of fats and you increase your chances of aerobic metabolism at the cellular level. Okay? And guess what? We're back to the oxygen-based strategies that we talked about in tier number one. Eat the wrong, eat the wrong foods or the wrong kinds of fats, i.e. Fats that have been you know, hydrogenated or processed excessively, exposed to light and heat, and you steer away from what you ultimately desire, which is that unhampered oxygen-based aerobic metabolism. When it comes to brain health, oxygen and hydration, yeah, principles one and two from tier number one, make a huge difference. But when combined with the long-chain omega-3 fatty acids, and you're really you know, into the realm of making some serious progress, EPA and DHA rich oils must be part of your diet to allow you to exert positive influence on the, you know, on the arcasinoid production pathway. And we've got Dr. Barry Sears to thank for all this research, you know, in his, in his books The Zone, and you know, many other doctors like Dr. Daniel Amen, who by the way has performed over 30,000 spec scans on the brains of those people with varying disorders from sports-induced head injuries to children with ADHD and everyone else in between. And he talks of something called brain envy, yeah? So forget worrying about the size of your biceps, yeah? You should be thinking more about the health of your brain okay, and what it looks like. And Dr. Daniel Amen is a great promoter of EPA and DHA rich oils. And I suggest you, know, you study his work. Then you've got the, you know, the medium chain fatty acids or the MCTs, you know, as they're commonly known. Rich in foods such as coconut oil. And then there's the CLA and butyric acid and other fats found in butter oil and grass fed butter. You know, the list goes on and we explore them inside the course. So what's the summary here? Don't discard diets but don't get too wrapped up in them that you miss the big picture, which is what the anti-aging health matrix is giving you. Use diets to further, you know, to, to further your understanding and give you more options on how to manipulate carbohydrate, protein, and fat ratios. But here's the warning. You can get so lost in the, on the, you know, the technicality of diet approaches, you can miss the big picture. Yeah? And no diet in the world is going to work well if your oxygen levels are low and your hydration levels are poor. But don't worry, as I said, we've got you back here which is why we spent so long discussing all of the essentials in tier number one first. Remember the golden rule, don't put the cart before the horse, okay? Don't let the, don't let the tail wag the dog. So you'll get enough resources inside the anti-aging health matrix to learn about the different carbohydrates, fat and protein, protein ratios to experiment with and find out what works best for you. Depending on where you live and, you know, and, and seasonal changes as well, because let's face it, you know, you're going to be eating differently if you're in 40 degrees temperatures versus a brutal sub-zero winter. So here's the thing, now you're beginning to think more you know, intelligently. Okay, you're thinking healthy, nutritious, non-toxic carbohydrate sources, prepared intelligently and consumed appropriately depending on your activity levels and your goal, plus the eight essential sugars, not just carbs. Okay, carbs and the eight essential sugars. Is that easy to remember? Okay, then you've got healthy, nutritious protein sources. Okay, prepared intelligently and consumed appropriately, depending on what your activity levels and your goal, plus the essential amino acids. Okay, protein and the essential amino acids. How easy is that? Then you've got healthy, nutritious, non toxic fat sources. And again, prepared intelligently and consumed appropriately, depending on what? Your activity levels and your goal, plus the essential fatty acids. 
you know, the long chain omega-3 fats, EPA and DHA, and the medium chain fatty acids or MCTs as they're commonly referred to, etc, etc. So you're getting this. It's not just about carbs, protein and fat. It's separating out the essential carbohydrates, you know, also known as the essential sugars, the essential protein building blocks, you know, the, the essential amino acids, which, you know, more people are familiar with because of bodybuilding websites, etc. And the essential forms of fat, aka the essential fatty acids. Okay, so where are we right now? Well, that's six out of the seven principles in tier number two. But there's one more, and it's the gateway to tier number three. But before we get to that, let me ask you a question. What do you think the quality of crops is like today compared to, compared to say, 100 years ago? Are the crops more nutritious? Or due to mass farming, and that's a clue, less nutritious? I'm here to tell you they're less nutritious. But the question is why, okay? Well, think about this. Where are the crops grown? Okay, the answer is simple. For the most part, in fields, right? But more specifically, the soil in the field. So the next question, is the soil more nutrient-dense? You know, more specifically, more mineral-dense or less mineral-dense compared to what it was 100 years ago? Well, the answer is less, you know, less mineral-dense or less nutrient-dense. And if there's less nutrients in the soil, okay, then there's going to be less nutrients in the plants, right? And if there's less nutrients in the plants, and you're going to eat them, then you're going to get less nutrients into your body. Add to the fact that many of the soils are now full of pesticides and herbicides and a whole host of toxicity that your body has to process, it's really time to wake up and make better decisions. Because, it, you know, because if I do, yeah, if I make a better decision and you make a better decision, and we demand together better crops, then simultaneously we heal the planet, right? But let's not worry about that just yet. Because you can't heal the planet unless you heal yourself first, yeah? You go first. And that brings us to principle number seven, which leads us into tier number three. And that principle is the principle of micronutrients. So what are micronutrients? Well, many of you are gonna, gonna know the answer to this question, but I'm pretty convinced you only know half the story. And being in the business of selling supplements, I know many people are too focused on this area and not focused enough on the big picture of health that we've talked about in tiers number one, you know, the, the big seven principles and what we've just covered in tier number two. Now, obviously there's a crossover in principles, hence why I call it the matrix. Because for many people, the word matrix conjures up a web of interconnecting principles that all impact each other in one way or another. So with this being the case, in the next video, we're going to drill even deeper into the anti-aging health matrix and you'll soon discover how all of this fits together in a way that will make it crazy simple for you to make health-based decisions that will serve you for the rest of your entire life. Okay, so let's recap. You know the importance of, of the principles in tier number one of the anti-aging uh, matrix. You know that tier number two expands on the subject of nutrition with the intention you know, to make food choices to have you moving away from the top 10 kilos and march towards your 100th birthday, which is ultimately the goal of the anti-aging health matrix. You've upgraded your thinking to think beyond carbohydrates and protein and fat and think more strategically, i.e. carbohydrates and the eight essential sugars, protein and the strategic uses of the essential amino acids, fat and the essential fatty acids that are needed for your nervous system, the myelination of, your, of nerves, and for the building blocks of your brain. You, all, you also know that the last principle in tier number two is the gateway into tier number three of the anti-aging health matrix, and that is the subject of micronutrients, critical in a world where nutritious food is becoming less and less available and replaced with packaged, processed, sugar-rich, salt-rich, toxin-rich, genetically modified food. And therefore, we need an insurance policy to ensure we march towards our 100th birthday, you know, with certainty. So with that being the case, I'll see you on the next video, okay, where we dive into the health matrix and you complete your training on the fundamentals of this revolutionary system. As I've said before, if you like this, you know, this video, and it's piqued your curiosity, and you can see how powerful all of this information is when combined together. Leave a comment below, share this video far and wide, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.